What if Naruto was Sun's heir? Death's Guardian Season 3 Part 1 Reading Sun's Heir, Death's Guardian 3, The Argonauts by Engineer Forever Chapter 1 A new book appeared before the audience. Finally, Apollo smiled, no more dites kid. It was his kid's time to shine. Aren't you happy, Talia? Annabeth asked with a grin as the hunter glared at her with a grumpy look. Shut up, Annie. So, who's reading? Apollo asked. I will, Jason said. All right, good man. The sun god nodded. After he cleared his throat, Jason began to read of the new and final adventure of Apollo's son. The sun shone brightly down into the window of a bedroom. A young boy with wild blonde hair groaned and rolled onto his stomach. He grabbed a pillow and pulled it onto his head. The pillow warmed too quickly and the boy yelped. He tossed his pillow at the window and scowled at the current bane of his existence. All right, all right, geez, I'm up, he said. The sunlight died down and he sighed. Apollo snickered. He loved doing that to people. So, where's Naruto? Percy asked. Not that he really cared. A new challenger has appeared. Leo said in a deep voice. He rolled out of bed and went to the bathroom across the hall. His hand grabbed onto the doorknob and jostled it. Nothing. It's occupied. Dork. A girl's voice called from within. Ah. Siblings hogging the bathroom. Apollo nodded. Never had to deal with that with Arte. She always went outside. Why you? Artemis started to strangle her twin for having the very nerve of mentioning that. She was a hunter. True. But she never she didn't go outside. Artemis, Zeus said tiredly as Apollo started to turn blue. Enough. Artemis mouthed. I'll get you later. Apollo blew her a kiss. Adding more fuel to the fire. Yes. Well worth it. Double yes. He groaned and pounded on the door. Hurry up, will ya? I've gotta pee. The loud whir of a fan caused the girl to shout. Go use another bathroom then. This one is occupied. He pounded on the door again. How long have you been in there? None of your business. Now beat it before I call mom. I'll tell. Piper snickered. Resigned to his defeat, he walked down the hall to the stairs. The floorboards creaked and protested against his steps, but he ignored them and continued on. The smell of cooking meat filled the air and the sound of something sizzling hit his ears. Bacon. The guys said, each with a dreamy smile on their face. Gross. Piper gagged. Those poor pigs. The bathroom could wait. Food was needed. Now. Like every boy, Artemis rolled her eyes. They think with their stomachs. Damn right, Apollo said. Morning, he said as he came into the kitchen and plopped into a chair. The cook smiled lightly. Morning. Bolt. Bolt. Hades asked dryly. He snorted. What schmuck would damn their child, Bolt? I think it's a fine name. Zeus huffed. Yes. Because naming Percy, Fish, would have been just as fine. Poseidon rolled his eyes as Percy paled at the very thought. Bacon and eggs, again. Bolt sounded a bit disappointed. The cook turned and narrowed two purple eyes at him. Do you have something against bacon? No, but this is like the third time in a row, Bolt said. How many pigs did you kill to get all the bacon? Exactly. Piper, get off the soapbox. Leo rolled his eyes. Piper just stuck her tongue out at him. The cook huffed. Personally, I didn't kill any. I did pay a farmer for the meat though, so take your beef up with him. Apollo chuckled. Ba dump bump. That was bad, Bolt said. He failed to hide his snicker. The cook tittered as she made a plate. Still made you laugh, didn't it? Where's your sister? Hogging the bathroom, Bolt said. A plate was set in front of him and he smiled. Thanks, Bachan. Kashina smiled back at him. Anytime, Nico, waifu. Apollo gasped. What's she doing with this new kid? Shut up and we'll see. Athena told him. Bolt pouted. Bachan, I'm eight years old, don't call me that anymore. But you'll always be my little sunlight, Nico. Kashina gave him a tight hug. Ah, Annabeth said. That's adorable. She kissed him on the head, making him whine. You've got a test today. Eat your breakfast and then go get ready. Hi, Bachan, Bolt said. He ate an egg and then went back upstairs to prepare for the day. Muffled rock music came from the other side of the door with various signs that either said, 
no dorks allowed, or keep out. Typical sister stuff, Leo nodded. Nissa was like that, too. And in the center was a poster for an old rock band called ACDC. Girls got good taste, Talia smirked. Bolt had heard a few of their songs before thanks to a few archaic things called CDs he got from his grandfather. Apollo rubbed his chin, a smile slowly splitting his face as he made the connections between all the clues. They weren't bad, but it was really weird to play one. Bolt went into the bathroom with his chosen attire and showered. When he stepped out, he took a moment to look over himself in the mirror. Unruly blonde hair that made him look like he was struck by lightning, blue eyes that were on the edge of being either electric or the same shade as the sky, and two whisker marks that covered either cheek. Wait, whisker marks, blue eyes boarding electric or sky blue, blonde hair, Annabeth trailed off with a grin. Talia choked on air and started to pale. No way. Yes, Aphrodite beamed wickedly. Zeus huffed angrily while Apollo beamed. Awesome. A grandkid. He then made a few faces before brushing his teeth. It was the little things in life he did to make himself smile. Bolt left the bathroom fresh and clean, with a white t-shirt that had a small spiraling flame on it and black shorts that had pockets to hide all his troublemaking gear. He had a big plan for Aburame Sensei and Serutobi Sensei today. He grabbed the supplies he needed from his room and ran down the stairs, nearly bowling over his sister in the process. Watch it, dork, you're going to get someone killed, Joan said. Named her after Joan Jett, huh, nice one. Apollo nodded in approval, while Talia was still in shock. Joan was a teenager, having been born five years before him. She was a near-carbon copy of their mother, only she had their father's unique eyes and faint whiskers hidden underneath her freckles. Even her personality was the same as their mom's. A Talia clone, Nico gasped out. God save us all, Percy whispered in a mock serious voice. Talia came back to reality still a bit pale. Shut up, she snapped at them. Stupid cousins, maybe if you moved your big butt I wouldn't run into it, Bolt said in return. Perfect siblings, Apollo nodded. You little come here. Two tanned hands reached out to grab him, but Bolt slipped away and ran into the kitchen, his sister right behind him. Bolt skid to a stop before he could run into the woman giving him the glare of doom, patent pending. Yeah, that's Talia's glare, all right. Annie, the red-faced hunter cried out. From the kitchen entryway, she was dressed in form-fitting black jeans, a solid black shirt and a white jacket with gold trimming. Her untamed raven locks reached her tense shoulders and two intense eyes glared down at him for daring to run within her home. Hot, Leo said, getting glares from Zeus, Artemis, Talia, and Jason. What? It's true. He cried out. Not like Talia would give him the time of day. So distracted by this obstacle in his way, Bolt failed to elude his sister, who grabbed him under the head with one arm and proceeded to give him the worst noogie of his life to date with the other hand. Jason pursed his lips, he wanted a noogie from his sister. He sighed, they've missed so many sibling moments. Ow, Joan, stop. Bolt struggled to get free from his older sister's wrath. You need to learn some manners. Joan said as she ground her knuckles into his head. There was a sharp whack and Bolt dropped to the ground, his hands on his head. Joan held her own and scowled at her attacker. Mom, he started it. Arte would say that all the time. Because you do, Apollo. And I'm finishing it. Get in the kitchen, both of you. But I already ate, Bolt said. Kitchen. The electric blue eyes narrowed. Now. Stern mama. Piper whistled, getting a glare from Talia. A heavy hand is important. Reina idly commented with her lips pursed. She had been updated on her affairs in this story. And currently she was not pleased for her other. Yes, mom. The two siblings quickly took seats at the table across from each other. Bolt tried not to meet Joan's eyes, but he failed in his endeavor and swallowed heavily when she mouthed, I will get you later. I feel for him, Jason said for his nephew. Talia was a bit scary. He made note to stay out of Joan's sight for most of the day until she cooled down. Here you are ran on, Kashina set a plate down in front of the girl. Joan frowned. Bachan, don't you start too. Kashina said with a smile. If I can still call your brother Nico, 
you'll still be my little storm cloud. Ran on. Annabeth smirked at Talia, who scowled. I swear Annie, I will tell stories about you as a kid. Still worth it. Talia clicked her tongue. What's the word for pain in the butt? Talia asked with a smirk. I thought they called that work. Kashina smiled and handed a plate over to Talia, who took it with her left hand, a golden and silver band on the ring finger. And cannon. Apollo beamed at seeing his mother's ring. Talia nibbled on her lip. That's only if you hate your job, Kachin. A tall man walked into the kitchen, he wore a white flak jacket over a white shirt with a golden omega on the front. A pair of dark jeans covered his legs and taped around his left thigh was a kanai pouch. The man had short hair and three whisker marks on either cheek, unlike the two that were on Bolton Jones. He got even more attractive, Aphrodite said as she ate up the image while Apollo beamed proudly. Some of the girls blushed and their boyfriends groaned. Leo was outright scowling. Talia swallowed heavily. Talia turned and smiled lightly. Morning, whiskers. Morning, Leah Chan. Naruto bent over and gave Talia a kiss on the lips. Bolt gagged and Joan rolled her eyes. Their parents were so gross sometimes. He grinned when his father put a hand on his head and ruffled his hair. Morning kids. Ready for the test today, Bolt. Bolt grinned. You bet. I've got it in the bag. Shikadai already gave me the answers. Smart boy. Hermes grinned and gave him a thumbs up. Naruto grinned back as he pulled out his seat. Atta boy. You really shouldn't encourage their cheating, Naruto. Kashina said, waving her ladle at him. If you're not cheating, you're not trying. Joan loosened her headband around her neck and shifted her shoulders to adjust her flak jacket. Chunin, huh, Annabeth smiled. Guess she's good. Damn right, Talia mumbled. Her cheeks heated at the looks she got. Shut up. Naruto beamed at her from where he stood. That's right, Haim. Bolt snickered. Yeah, she's a princess, all right. Shut up, dork. Joan said. Her son-like pupils glared at her brother for his mockery. I never got to call you dork, Talia said wistfully to Jason. Please don't start, Jason said dryly. Shut up, dork. Stop fighting at the table, Talia said around a bite of her bacon. Yes mom. The two siblings settled for glaring at each other. Thanks, Kachin. Naruto took his offered breakfast and set it on the table. How many more days do you have off? Lady Persephone was kind enough to give me these past three. She's sweet like that. Demeter smiled. I have to leave today, Sochi, Kashina said. Naruto smiled sadly and gave her a hug. They held it for a few seconds before Kashina walked around and hugged her grandchildren, kissing both on the side of their heads before she gave Talia a hug goodbye. Same time for Christmas this year. Talia asked as they pulled apart. Hopefully, Kashina said. She sighed. That idiot just loves to laze around in the winter. Do not. Apollo crossed his arms childishly. Do too. Artemis rolled her eyes. You always pick on me. Artemis cracked a little grin. I think it's cool. Bolt said. Dark most of the day and bright for a bit. It's like a giant firework. Thank you. Bolt. Apollo grinned. He's my favorite legacy. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Joan said. Indeed. Joan. Artemis nodded. Smart girl, just like her mother. Lady Artemis. Talia ducked into her jacket. Now seated at the table, Naruto whacked her hand with his fork. Be nice. Yes, daddy, Joan said. She's a daddy's girl, huh? Jason smirked. With a dad like that, why not? Piper asked. True. She glared at Bolt when he made a victorious face at her. Bye. Kashina exploded in a plume of smoke. Bolt looked at his father. When do I get to learn that? After you graduate, Naruto said. Boo, teach him now. Hermes cried out. He put his egg between two pieces of toast and went to Talia's side. He kissed her softly. I should get going, too. Big day, today, meeting and all. Yeah, yeah, just get going already, Talia said with a small smile. So eager for me to leave. It's almost scandalous, Naruto said. He chuckled at the frown she gave him and stole another kiss. Tell your mystery boyfriend I said hello. Like her father, Hera said scathingly under her breath. Zeus gave her a hurt look and Talia glared at her. She was nothing like her dad. 
In that sense, anyway. He vanished in a flash of light. That idiot, Talia said under her breath, her cheeks the lightest tinge of pink. She gave a stern look to her son. You're not allowed to be like your father when you grow up. What? Why? His dad was awesome, right? Apollo nodded. His kid rocked. Because he always makes mom hot and bothered before he leaves. Joan smiled innocently as Talia glared daggers at her. Snarky daughter is snarky. Piper snickered while Talia groaned. Even her own kid was against her. Bolt just looked between them in confusion. What's that mean? I swear I've seen that look on Percy. Annabeth giggled, getting a dull glare from her boyfriend. Thanks, he said as dry as sand. You'll find out when you're older, dork, Joan said. She set her plate on the counter and ran for the door. I'm going out to train with my team. Later mom, bye Bolt. The door was open for a second before she took off to the sky. Correction, Talia 2.0. Nico said, shut up. Talia glared at her cousin. She was kind of miffed her daughter could fly while she couldn't. Stupid fear. Bolt pouted jealously. He wished he could fly like that. At least one of them is grounded. Percy grinned. Eh, eh. Lame, Leo said with a raspberry. Last time he tried to copy Uncle Jason. He broke his wrist. Way to go, Jason, Leo said. It wasn't like I was teaching him. Help me do the dishes, Bolt, Talia said, sighing at her daughter's behavior. Then you can go to school. And you better stay there. Ah, Hookie, Hermes said. I loved creating that. Athena glared at him. At least you gave me forewarning so I could make truancy officers. Yes, Mom, settle down, settle down. The tall and stoic man that was Abarame Shino, known as Abarame Sensei by the class, looked at his students. His gaze was locked on one student in particular behind his strange glasses. Interesting eyewear, Aphrodite said with a wrinkle of her noise. He turned and nodded to his companion, who shrugged with a carefree smile on his face. Bolt smiled innocently as he assumed his sensei stared at him. The last thing he needed was to be called out before the fun could really begin. The test was passed out by Sarutobi Sensei and Bolt stared at it for a moment before he looked up at his teachers. Both were sitting down. Perfect. My prank senses, they tingle with delight. Hermes said with a growing smile. His hands came together in the ram seal and Bolt channeled his chakra to the seals he had slapped under the chairs after school the day before. Sarutobi Sensei's reaction was the most distracting, but Abarame Sensei was certainly the most entertaining. While Sarutobi Sensei jumped up and hollered while he held his rear end. My butt is stunned, I need a full heel. Leo cried out. Abarame Sensei went stiff as a board and slumped forward. He shocked his teachers. Annabeth gasped. Her mother looked livid. Percy nodded in approval. Talia was outright grinning while her two divine brothers laughed. Bolt grinned at his co-conspirator, who rolled his eyes and pulled out a sheet of paper and handed it across the aisle. He copied the answers word for word and then handed the answer key back. Thank you, Hermes, Bolt thought. Anytime, Bolt. Damn it, Herm, he got caught. Apollo frowned at his brother. Well, he should have prayed more, Hermes said in an effort to defend himself. It wasn't me, Serutobi sensei. Like that works, Percy scoffed. Sir, you have to call his parents. They need to be the ones to discipline him. Nothing we do works, Konohamaru Serutobi said to the head of the academy. Well, didn't he get to be handsome? Aphrodite asked with a smile. I don't have to do anything of the sort. The man had his hands intertwined in front of him, and frowned at Bolt. You do know what I will do instead, yes. It took a few moments, but suddenly Bolt's eyes were wide. Just call my mom, please, Yumi no Gigi. Anything but that. I don't know. Talia seems like the grounding type. Hazel hummed. No TV or video games. Leo gasped. The horror. If my dad finds out I'm responsible for that. Yes, Hokage-sama would be displeased at his favorite restaurant's sudden decision to blacklist him, Uruka said. Kids good, Hermes said, looking impressed. He rubbed his chin. I suppose the only other option we have, is detention. Yes, yes, anything but that. Bolt nodded frantically. The last time his father was kept from ramen, well, 
he heard that the village of Iron was a nice-looking place. Wow, extreme reaction much? Percy asked. Not really with this one, Artemis said with a thumb to her brother. Hey, Baruka smiled at the amused Konohamaru. See, no fuss necessary, just send a note for three weeks detention home. For now, let him enjoy his weekend. If he has one, I doubt it. Talia grunted. Detention, little brat, oh gods, I'm getting into it. Konohamaru chuckled. You're a sadist, Yumino san. I'm insulted that you would say that, Serutobi san, Baruka said. He waved the two off and went back to his book that depicted a boy standing in the ocean with a sparking tube in his hand. Now go, both of you. I have reading to do. Konohamaru shook his head and led Bolt out of the office. How does your dad do it, kid? A series of books and running the village. Shadow clones. And he's a writer now. Brilliant. Apollo grinned. Talia really lucked out, huh? I suppose. Artemis commented since she liked Naruto. I'm right here, Talia said in a tiny voice. They're unreliable, Bolt said with a frown. It just sunk in that he sacrificed the next three weeks of his freedom to survive his father's wrath. A wise play, Athena smirked. Hopefully, it was a smart decision. Well, I hope he plans to hand the hat down soon. People aren't going to care who runs the village if his books keep selling like they are. What number is he on? Three, four. His next book is a special one, Bolt said with a smile. Nichan wrote a story for it. Oh ho, a budding writer as well. The sun god grinned. Definitely got that from her father. Percy snickered, he ignored the death glare from Talia. And I got to help grandpa write one. Apollo smiled and placed a hand on his chest. Bonding time with a grandson, nothing sweeter. Knowing you, you'll end up corrupting him somehow, Artemis said dryly. Talia scowled slightly at the thought. You just love taking your shots at me today, aren't you? Artemis' lips tugged upward in a small smirk. Really? Konohamaru asked. He opened the doors to the academy and smirked. I'll have to check it out when it's released. Maybe if it's good, you can use that to increase your grades. Get going, Bolt, and don't cause any trouble today. Yes sir, Bolt said. He ran off and jumped at the nearest cart. He's going to cause trouble, Leo said with a smirk. Duh, Nico snickered. He climbed to the roof of the building next to it with a gleeful smile on his face. With a sudden idea, Bolt turned right and headed for one of his and Joan's favorite babysitters. Babysitters, maybe an aunt or uncle, perhaps. Piper asked with a smirk. Jason smiled at the thought. Stuff it, McLean. Talia glared at her brother's girlfriend. He came to a stop when he got to the tall mountainside. To the left was a pond nearly large enough to be a lake and to the right was a large cave carved in beneath the seventh head on the Hokage Monument. Hesitantly, Bolt went into the cave. It wasn't that he was scared of what was inside, but the darkness always made him uneasy. Hades chuckled darkly at that, getting glares from Zeus and Apollo. He swallowed and snapped his fingers. His hand crackled to life with blue static giving off a dim glow. Seems he got the electricity in the family. Frank commented. Good for him, Annabeth shook her head. The kid must go wild with it. Ojasan. Bolt's voice bounced off the walls of the cave. There was a deep growl before something slipped around his ankle and Bolt was pulled into the cave with a yell. He soon found himself dangling upside down, his electric blue eyes staring into a giant red one. The fox, Apollo glared at the image. You should keep yourself aware of your surroundings, Bolt. The owner of the eye turned Bolt around and set him on the ground. Shouldn't you be out pranking someone? A monster after my own heart. Hermes beamed. I wanted you to teach me a new trick. Bolt grinned eagerly. No, the fox didn't bother to hesitate. Ouch, sad face. Leo winced. What? Come on, Ojasan. Go ask your father. Bolt frowned. Dad's too busy. Then ask your mother to help you with your electrokinesis. I already learned the basics and she won't help me with anything else until I'm a ninja, Bolt said. If only he hadn't broken his wrist when he was six. Motherly love. Annie. Quiet. The large form of Bolt's Ojasan shifted until it was fully facing him. How goes your chakra control? 
I can walk up 10 feet without falling off the tree, Bolt said. That was higher than anyone else in the class. Come to me when you can walk up and down a 30-foot tall tree. The red eyes closed and a deep steady breathing filled the air. Bolt frowned. Can't you teach me anything? Pay rent or get out. Nico thumbed at the door. A red eye cracked open. You won't leave without something, will you? Nope. Fine. The large kitsune sighed. We'll work on aerokinesis again. Bolt groaned. I'm no good at it, though. Talia seemed to smile at that. That's why we practice. You may never be able to fly like your sister or uncle, but gusts of wind are no laughing joke. The best way to practice this is to learn something your grandfather made. Because I'm awesome, the sun god said without any sense of humility. You're going to teach me the Horatian. Bolt's excitement made him blow lightly. No. Bolt deflated and dimmed. I will be teaching you the move he created based off of my attack, the Rasengan. Awesome spinny ball of doom. Leo cheered. Bolt's eyes widened excitedly. Even Joan didn't know the Rasengan yet. She'll be so jealous. Arte always is of me. Apollo nodded sagely. His twin scoffed. Hardly. Ow. Bolt said. After a few hours of failed practicing, he left his Ojasan's cave sore and littered with a few scrapes that were slowly healing up. Bolt winced at the nasty gash on his palm. It wasn't as bad as it was before, but he couldn't go home with it. His mom would ask too many questions, not to mention freak out at the gash. What loving mother wouldn't? Annabeth asked with a smirk. Talia glared at her with a red face. Gods, she wanted to die. And his dad would probably figure out where he had been. So, he walked to his second home away from home, the bookstore. Good for him, Annabeth beamed, making Percy roll his eyes. He liked reading, ever since his dad first read him the tale of the utterly gutsy ninja Bolt was hooked. He even had copies of his dad's books, and he knew Joan had a few of them, but neither of them said anything. They didn't want their dad to try and appeal to them specifically, or stop with the free previews. Spoilers. Apollo hissed darkly. Hermes smirked. He loved spoilers. Gave him all the dirt. Hey. Bolt Kuhn. Bolt smiled at the cashier. Hey. Reiko Nichan. Ooh. Nike's legacy. Aphrodite smiled, remembering that little cutie of a baby. Hiding out again. Huh. Reiko smiled back at him. She was a few years older than Joan and just an inch or so shorter than his mom. Her brown hair was pulled back into a loose ponytail and her golden eyes were hiding behind two wire-framed glasses. She was dressed in a tracksuit that Bolt heard his father say was a gift from her grandmother. Sexy. Leo whistled, getting a few nods from the younger gods. Quite the beauty. The love goddess nodded in agreement. Yeah, just until I finish healing some scrapes, Bolt said. Went to see Kurama-sama again? Reiko asked. She shook her head. Your mother will have a cow. And then Kayofu-sama will have to protect the cow from her. Hera scowled at her stepdaughter and Talia smirked. She would eat that cow. Kurama Ojasan is so cool though. Bolt said, missing her joke. He's teaching me something that even Joan doesn't know. Really? Well don't tell me any more or I'll have to tell her. The girl code is strong you know, Reiko said. She waved him over. Want to come sneak a peek at the final book? You got a copy. Bolt was shocked. His dad only let his mom or the publisher look at the drafts. He was at her side before he registered the fact that he was in motion. What's the title? Percy Jackson and the Last Olympian, Reiko said. What? Percy blinked. Hestia looked interested at that. It's not finished, but it's a good first chapter. Ew. It starts with Uncle Percy on a date. Bolt said with a frown once he got through the first paragraph. With Rachel, Percy chuckled nervously when Annabeth pursed her lips and glared at him. But it's not with Annabeth, Reiko said. She had a grin on her face. Annabeth scowled. So, it's gross. I don't want to read about Uncle Percy kissing a girl, Bolt said. He hopped down and walked away. I'm going to find the Titan's curse. That one's my favorite. Sanaruto so basically wrote about your adventures, Hazel said as Percy's jaw unhinged. And here I thought I stole ideas. Hermes whistled and soon grinned. I love that kid. That's because your mom is in it. Reiko rolled her eyes. 
Talia perked up slightly when she heard that. It's the most interesting one. Bolt denied with a light flush. Artemis and Grandpa are in it. Apollo beamed. Ah, hear that Arte. He loves us. Artemis hummed in mild interest. He walked through the aisles before he grabbed the book in question and pulled it off the shelf. And Aunt Bianca let Dad kill her off in the book. Woo. Nico cheered dryly. Great to hear that. Always the most interesting choice, Reiko said. She flipped through the pages in front of her and then looked up. Did your dad ever tell you why he never wrote himself in the books? Apollo pouted. Lamasauce. Because he's cooler than Uncle Percy and would outshine him. Percy scowled. Truth. Apollo. Bolt asked while he flipped through the book to the last chapter he was on at home. He walked back to the front of the store and sat down behind the counter. Reiko smirked and whopped him on the head. No, you little idolizer. Kyofu left himself out because he thinks that the camps could have done it without him. Damn right. Percy crossed his arms. Bolt rolled his eyes. Yeah right. And then you'll say Uncle Nico wouldn't have become the head of Camp Olympia. He's so angst why in these books. I am not. Nico scowled, getting odd looks. Shut up. What is Camp Olympia? Reina asked, never hearing of it. No idea. Hermes said, he knew the gossip around the nectar cooler. I think it's cute, Reiko said. Though I wonder how Miss Hazel will come out from the underworld. Or how Mr. Grace met Mrs. Grace. We know. Jason, Piper, and Hazel said as one. Bolt gagged. You sound like Aiko in Azuka. She's always spouting off things that make me think she's a daughter of Aphrodite. Maybe she is. Reiko grinned. Inazuka san is a good looking guy. That dog boy. Aphrodite gagged until an image popped. Oh, I take that back. He got sexy. She leered at the picture until it disappeared. Then she made a small noise of disappointment. For a washed up mutt, maybe, Bolt said under his breath. Reiko swatted his head and he chuckled. That's what dad called him. Humph, your father and Inazuka-san have been butting heads for as long as I've known them. Reiko hummed and turned another page. Is your hand healed? Bolt looked at his hand and saw that only a faint red mark remained. Yeah, it is. I'll put the book away for you. Thanks Nichan. Bolt shrugged. He closed the book and got to his feet. See you around, Nichan. Tell me when the next book comes out, okay? Pre-order. Percy grinned, I'm awesome. Only with me, Annabeth smirked. Duh, he kissed her cheek. Will do, Reiko said. Bolt left the bookstore with his hands in his pockets and his head hung. His mother was going to kill him for getting three weeks worth of detention. Not to mention his father's disappointment. He thought for sure that he wasn't going to get blamed for his prank. Then again, the shock tags were probably his motif by now. It runs in the family. Poseidon sniggered along with Hades. Zeus flared his nostrils, glaring at them. Bolt grunted as he ran into something and fell to his butt. Hey, watch where you're going. Idiot, you're the one that needs to watch where you're going. Bolt looked up into the unique eyes of his older sister. Oh snap, run boy, run, Hermes urged the poor boy. Oh, hey Joan, he said. He wasn't sure if she was still mad. Hey yourself dork. Joan said. Well, she wasn't too mad. She offered him her hand and pulled him to his feet. Where've you been? Nowhere. Bolt said, looking off to the side. Joan chuckled. You suck at lying. It's in the blood. Apollo surged haplessly. So do you. Bolt gave her an accusing look. I'll bet you were flirting with that Nara guy again. What? Talia frowned, eyes narrowed. Joan rolled her eyes. I wasn't flirting with Moroku. Aphrodite was tittering. I never said it was Moroku, Bolt said. He was pulled into another headlock. What are you going to do, tell on me? Joan asked. Yes, tell the truth. Talia nodded. You're supposed to. Maybe, Bolt said, grunting as Joan tightened her grip. If you tell dad, I swear to the gods they won't find your body for seven days. And that's the lucky number. Apollo winked. Joan started to take them off of the ground. She grabbed the back of Bolt's shirt and pulled him up so he could wrap his arms around her neck. You're lucky that it's almost dinner time or I would hang you by dad's nose. Ha, now that's a new one. Ares grinned, 
A real good one to be honest. Now, what schmuck should he do it to? Bolt shuddered, recalling the last poor bastard that Joan had done such a thing to. It was in retaliation for touching her butt. What? Talia snapped. Jason frowned at hearing that. She got grounded for three months, but neither of their parents really enforced the punishment. In fact, their mother seemed to be extremely proud and he was sure there was a picture of it in his father's study. Damn right, really getting into it, huh? Shut it, McLean. The day after, there was a silver pamphlet in the mail and their parents had a small argument. Artemis looked innocent as Apollo glared at her. I can imagine how that one went. Hermes chuckled and cleared his throat. Naruto would be like, my little girl doesn't need any man in her life, and Talia would be like, no way Nightshade is going to recruit my daughter of all things. Humph, I can see where Naruto comes from, Zeus said. He preferred his daughter's keeping to their oaths, even if Athena found a way around it. It was over by the next day and no one brought up the pamphlet again. They made it back to the small apartment complex that was remodeled into their home. Their mother opened the door and let Joan go in to wash up, waiting at the door expectantly for Bolt's explanation. He just handed her the piece of paper he had gotten earlier. Fifty lashes, and no candy, Ares. Hestia looked horrified. The war god just laughed. Talia read the note silently, and then shook her head. Grounded for the next two weekends. Go get ready for dinner and then you can tell your father about your brilliant class disruption. Busted. The demigods winced in sympathy. Yes mom, Bolt said, going inside. Dinner was a nice affair. They were treated with their father's special hamburgers made from Apollo's red cattle, with permission, something Bolt greatly enjoyed, but Joan was a bit miffed they didn't have ramen. Ha, ah, it's reversed. Percy chuckled. Naruto's princess, indeed, Hazel said with a smile. Talia was both happy and miffed about that. It was a simple family dinner the four of them talking about their day. Bolt wisely kept out his training with Kurama and his reading, but did mention he visited Reiko after school. His mother talked about a conversation she had with her cousin about next summer's visit. His father complained about an annoying councilman trying to convince him to export Ichiraku as a worldwide dish. Never, Hazel declared with her finger in the air. Joan talked about getting a tricky collaboration jutsu down with her team saying they'd show it off once it was perfected. When dinner ended, Joan was roped into doing dishes and Bolt went into his father's study to tell him about his day. After he finished telling his dad about his prank, he let out a sigh of relief when his dad started to laugh. Hermes smirked while Apollo glared at him. The little cattle thief got lucky. Tags on the chairs, Naruto said with a chuckle. He wiped a tear away from his eye. That's brilliant, Bolt. Your fuinjutsu is getting better. Uncle Herm and Dad would be proud. We are, the two male gods in question said with smiles. You think so? Bolt asked. Naruto nodded. Yes, I have to agree with your mother, though. The next two weekends are ours. You don't get to play Valdez, video games. You fiend. Leo exclaimed angrily. Wait, I make games. I rule. He threw he hands in the air. Go Leo. Go Leo, go Leo, curfew bedtime, ah, and, you'll have to accompany me tomorrow to Camp Olympia. There's that camp again, Raina pursed her lips. I wonder what it is. Hera hung, Bolt perked up, for real. Naruto smiled lightly, your sister was your age when I first took her, it's only fair. Plus, Annie would love to see her, cute little nephew, again. I would, Annabeth beamed at Talia getting a glare in return. Bolt groaned. I hope she doesn't try to teach me Latin again. I'll protect you from the evils of learning, Naruto said. He ruffled his son's hair. Nico will be happy to see you. He misses his little buddy. Little buddy, huh? Percy grinned and got a smirk from Nico. Shut it Uncle Percy, I bet he likes me more. Yeah right. I hope so, Bolt said. He yawned and stretched. Uncle Nico's cool. See. He does. Uncle Nico is way cooler. Nico smirked, liking the little guy. Percy pouted. Naruto arched a brow. Someone seems tired for not having that eventful of a day. Weird, Bolt said. He forced back another yawn, but it still escaped his lips. His eyes drooped slightly. 
He blanked out for a second and soon found himself being carried by his dad. Bolt yawned again. Dad. Yeah, Bolt, can you read me something? Bolt asked. Story time. Apollo smiled. Naruto cracked a smile. Sure, what do you want to read? The Lightning Thief. So likes me more. Percy assured, making Nico snort. If that's what you want. Bolt was laid in bed and tried his hardest to keep his eyes open while his dad left the room. A beat passed and his dad walked back in, the book in hand. Bolt scooted over and let his dad take a seat next to him. Naruto opened the book and held it down so they both could look at the ancient Greek alphabet that resided within. Look, I didn't want to be a half-blood. If you're reading this because you think you might be one, my advice is, close this book right now. Believe whatever lie your mom or dad told you about your birth, and try to lead a normal life. Too late, the half-blood said is one. Being a half-blood is dangerous. It's scary. Most of the time, it gets you killed in painful, nasty ways. If you're a normal kid, reading this because you think it's fiction, great. Read on. I envy you for being able to believe that none of this ever happened. I really do. Percy nodded. But if you recognize yourself in these pages if you feel something stirring inside stop reading immediately. You might be one of us. And once you know that, it's only a matter of time before they sense it too, and they'll come for you. From the shadows, Nico said with wiggly fingers, of doom. Bolt's eyes started to drift shut again. The last thing he heard before sleep overtook him was his father's voice. Don't say I didn't warn you. My name is Percy Jackson. Hi me. Percy waved with a stupid grin. Wow. You just like to monologue, huh? Talia asked. Shut up. The son of Poseidon scowled. I like his voice. Annabeth smiled, making her boyfriend perk up. Blue eyes snapped open and were immediately shielded from the sun's proud beam. Three whisker-marked cheeks contorted into a pained grimace. Wait, what? Apollo frowned. The blonde owner of the cheeks and eyes grabbed at his hand, which felt like it was on fire. He pushed the remnants of his dream to the back of his mind and focused on the pain in his hand. A dream, Talia said, letting out a breath she didn't know she was holding, so, only a dream. Okay. Hum, only a dream, Reina said, looking interested now. Ah. Jason said, he frowned, I'm not an uncle anymore. Jason, the dream would be forgotten for a long while. No, Aphrodite cried out, she scowled, Nalia is going perfectly. Aphrodite, cease your whining, Artemis said, accessible to only one other who found the whole thing extremely amusing. Well wasn't that nice of Phoebe? Helios asked himself as he watched the dream play through fully through his connection to Naruto's subconscious. Helios always did love a good show. Hephaestus said. Good to know there's a happy ending to all of this. Bolt huh. I wonder what story he will have. So it was just a dream. Nico asked. A prophetic dream. Apollo corrected. Reina frowned. But she knew that the future wasn't set in stone either. Talia began to begrudgingly read. Booty. Booty. This store sells booty. Butt cheeks. Booty. Booty. This store sells booty, make that ass clap, blared from the radio of a burnt orange challenger parked outside of a Wendy's. Talia turned red that she even had to read that as Artemis I began to twitch. I love hate, Apollo said at the demonic blare from his twin, I just hate that song. Totally hate, thought so. From the driver's window hung a sandal clad foot that moved to the hip hop beat. The owner of the foot and car had a fry hanging out of his mouth. A navy blue cap with a big red bee plastered on it covered his blonde hair, purchased just to irritate his father and pseudo little sister. Boston. Annabeth gasped, that traitor. Boo. L.A. Angels. Apollo cried out. He clapped along with the song when it asked him to and chuckled at the line that would most certainly piss his aunt off. You could improve your personality, but who the hell wants that? When you can find your self-esteem in the form of a brand new ass. Must. Kill. Artemis seethed at the very offense of this song. The driver's right hand reached over and grabbed the vanilla shake in the cup holder. After he took a sip, the driver sang along to the lyrics of the song by Ray William Johnson. Talia, make a note. Yes, Lady Artemis. He chuckled and applauded once the song ended. 
he switched the radio back to a punk rock station. Green Day blared from the speakers. Finally, something with taste. Talia grumbled as Apollo rolled his eyes. He grabbed another fry and glanced at the mirror. About time, he said as the passenger side door opened and a middle-aged man sidled in. He was wearing a black fedora, dark aviators, a white wife beater and jeans. Is that, Percy narrowed his eyes as Talia was glowing. Oh yeah, hey, man, it ain't easy to move around unnoticed for me. The newcomer said, he took a fry from the pouch, getting a glare from the younger blonde. I'm a celebrity, you know. Who is he? Leo whispered to Piper, who shrugged. Yeah, the devil that everyone knows with a fedora and sunglasses, the younger man said. I've been meaning to ask, what's with the country rock thing lately? I like it, just curious, you know. I've always been about music that my soul feels, man. When I was your age, I was angry and energetic. Now, I'm a bit mellowed out. Still like to party though. Apollo nodded. I know, I was all angst at their age. You still are. Hermes smirked. He got a mild glare for that one. Right, right. Well, two things I need to ask. Go ahead, the fedora man said. He reached for the shake, but his hand got slapped. He held his hand. Fuck, man, I'm just thirsty. Look, you may be my great whatever nephew, but you're not drinking my shake, okay? So he's a legacy of Apollo? Frank asked, getting a beaming smile from the sun god. Oh yeah, stingy. Suck it up, the younger man said. Anyway, the first thing I want to ask is if you got a hold of the others. Yeah, here's a list of people who said they'll keep an eye out, the man said. He reached into his back pocket and pulled out a folded up piece of paper. I'll keep my ear to the ground, too. I've got some people. Ooh, covert stuff. Ares grinned. It wasn't a big battlefield thing, but it was still messy. And Ares liked it messy. Right, well, you know the rules about electronics. Yeah, yeah, I can see them, but I've learned to ignore them. Entirely. No, I'm not that stupid. Hum. Artemis hummed getting a glare from her twin. Cool, and as for my second question, can you sign this? A CD was held up along with a marker. Girlfriend's birthday is coming up soon. She's not a huge fan, but she appreciates your older stuff. Damn right, Talia nodded. Alternative girl, huh? Punk, not bad. The hunter was beaming. Yeah, here. The man signed the cover and then popped the case open. The disc got a signature as well. Anything else you need, Naruto? Nah, thanks for your time, Mr. Richie, Naruto said as he tucked the CD away into the compartment next to him. Who? Jason scratched the back of his head. Kid Rock. Talia glowered. Was her brother really that incompetent? She'd have to get him an iPod. Mr. Richie got out of the car and tipped his hat before walking over to a black Harley park nearby. I still can't believe you know him. Naruto smirked. It's all about connections, Helios. My branch is very long. Apollo said, smirking at his innuendo. It could use a snipping. Demeter commented, getting the sun god to pale. The other god snickered. Speaking of, while it's nice to be out of the cold Long Island, why are we in California and not going to the other camp? That'd be nice to know. Reina said from what she had heard about this version of Naruto. Talia grunted not liking the topic, because I have no purpose to drop in on Jason or Reina while they prepare for their parts in the war, Naruto said. He pulled his foot in and changed the station to something playing daft punks, superheroes. Talia bobbed her head to that. He nodded his head to the beat while he turned soul on and revved the engine. He drove over to the nearest trash can and ditched his garbage, the last fry hung from his mouth as he did. Naruto pulled out of the Wendy's and drove south with a small frown on his face. Are you ready for this? A chance to beat his smug ass into the ground again. Shit, any god could tell you he's ready for this, Helios said. Oh oh, our fight. Ares grinned darkly. Finally, he cheered. You are going to lose. So badly, Athena smirked. Bah, you wish. Naruto nodded and moved his hand to the gear shift. He winced as he did. His hand felt like it was being ripped apart from the inside out. It was Ares' message. Time to fight. Ding ding. 
Hermes said while ringing a bell. That was part of the reason why he headed over to California, he needed to make sure his intelligence was still strong and his connections were holding up in case Ares won. Ares grinned at that while Apollo glared at him. The other part was to get away from camp for a bit. He and Percy were butting heads more often than he would like. Percy frowned at that. Percy didn't like half of the missions Naruto would develop and would often question the reasons behind them. He's not very good at listen. Talia frowned as Percy huffed. You just have to know the right words. Annabeth smirked, getting a dull glare from Percy. Ha ha. Annabeth would eventually get involved and Naruto's missions would be shunted aside once she heard he was designing potentially fatal ones, considered by the leading strategist to be too dangerous for campers. Athena frowned at that as Annabeth winced, it is. We would need all our forces for the coming battle. But subterfuge is still important, Annabeth. The war goddess told her, making her daughter frown. This was after the gods, via Mr. D, signed off on his request to lead missions into enemy territory with potential to not return. Did the kids care? No. They're too young to understand, Naruto thought. He frowned and pushed down on the pedal. Stupid brat, making my job difficult. I do my best. Percy mocked with crossed arms. And now you know how Zeus feels when he has to meet with his brother. Zeus and Poseidon grunted as one, both refusing to look at each other on that topic. Wonderful. The brat in question was standing outside a flower boutique with Talia and Bianca. Why are we together? Percy blinked. So, you two got the same letter, right? Percy asked. Come to Phony's pottery place. An important quest awaits you, Talia said, reading the small note in her hand. She let static cover her hand and crackled the paper into a ball. If this was Whiskers' idea of a joke, it's not funny. Phony Pottery Palace. What a terrible name. Demeter huffed. Naruto didn't send this, Bianca said softly. She was very introverted after she recovered from her case of bubonic plague, speaking only to her brother, boyfriend. Nico grunted at that, and guardian when necessary, Bianca still trained, but Percy could tell her self-esteem was very low. Nico and Hades frowned at that, it's not his handwriting, and this place. Yeah, might as well go inside, Percy said. He tossed the note over his shoulder and went up to the door. Litter bug, Demeter frowned, it is New York City. Poseidon commented, don't get me started on the rivers. Percy shivered in memory. He put his hand on the handle and opened the door. Talia and Bianca followed him inside. Percy looked around at all the various potted plants that surrounded them. Well, it's not a phony place. Talia rolled her eyes at the lame joke. Thank you for that observation, Percy. Just trying to lighten the mood. The son of the sea pouted as Talia rolled her eyes at his dramatics. Percy ignored her sarcasm. He went over to a small shrub of pomegranates and touched one of the fruits. Fresh. Someone just watered them. Oh yes, she has a place like that. Hades remembered as Demeter ruffled. Why had her daughter picked such a poor name for a business? Bianca turned from where she was and her eyes widened. We need to leave. And just like in every movie, it's too late. Piper shook her head. Percy started to ask her why but his question was cut off as the floor beneath him opened up. It happened beneath Bianca and Talia's feet as well and the three plummeted into darkness. They fell for a good five minutes before six glowing chains shot out from the shadowy ground and wrapped around their midsections. Their descent slowed until they landed on solid ground. They dropped to their knees, trying hard to recover their breath. When they finally did regain their breath, the three got back to their feet and warily looked around. Bianca Chan, Talia Chan, the excitable redheaded mother of one Naruto Uzumaki pulled the two girls into a tight hug. Hot ninja waifu, Kashina, Bianca happily hugged her teacher back while Talia struggled to escape the hug. A little tighter, Hera muttered, Kashina smiled at her and looked at Percy. Hey Percy, Sally gave you the letter I see. Oh, right, she knows mom. Percy nodded in remembrance. If you're quite done. Kashina, we have things to discuss. A woman walked into the dim light. Percy's breath was taken away at her appearance. She was tall and beautiful with curly black hair that flowed down past her shoulders. Her skin was pale and her eyes were multicolored, 
similar to that daughter of Aphrodite that hung out with Talia, only a bit faded. Piper flushed at the compliment as Demeter and Hades scoffed at the comparison. Kashina pouted and let the girls go. Yes, Lady Persephone. Thank you, Talia said to the goddess while she rubbed her side. Bianca shied away from Persephone and stayed close to Kashina. Smart, Nico muttered. Talia crossed her arms over her chest. Could someone tell us what the hell is going on? Persephone pursed her lips. Despite your manners, or lack thereof, I intend to do just that. Percy Jackson, several years ago you recovered Zeus Master Bolt from a thief. I request you retrieve another symbol of power. My husband's sword has been stolen. Hades palmed his face as Zeus and Poseidon gave him a look, it was her idea, I'm innocent here. We already talked about this. Bianca frowned. But, isn't his symbol of power his helmet? Ah, the boo cap. Poseidon said, getting snickers all around. Hades seethed at that. That's what I thought, Percy said. Kashina released a snicker and Persephone glared at her, her pale cheeks coloring slightly. Be silent, Kashina. Yes, Lady Persephone, Kashina said. The smile was still on her face. She's good for her, Demeter smiled. It was wonderful to see her daughter have a little friend. Persephone looked back at the demigods. Despite this being true, his sword is stronger than his helmet. Hades' sword was made with one of the keys of Hades. Hazel looked stunned at that, having heard of those from Nico. And that is, Talia asked, each key has the ability to send souls to the underworld. It can also free them, Bianca said. The sword was made with one, so Lord Hades does not even need to finish his opponent off. He simply has to touch them with his blade, Persephone said. Whoa, the demigod said besides Percy, Nico, and Talia. That's bad, Percy asked. That kind of weapon could be useful for their side. Other side of the coin, seaweed brain. Annabeth told him, getting a pout from the boy. Yes, idiot, that's bad, Talia said. Percy glared at her for the insult and she glared back. We're fighting against titans. If they can bring back anyone we kill can you imagine how long, or how short, this war would be? Not to mention how freaking op that is. Very op. Hades nodded. Poseidon's trident can't will things to and from the ocean and while Zeus can fry someone within 300 meters of his target, he can't banish people to space. In space, they can't hear you scream. Leo snickered, getting a few laughs. Boo. Ares jeered, the screaming was the best part. The sword unbalances the power between the big three. Okay, so it's bad, Percy said, brooding over his defeat. He looked back at the queen of the underworld and frowned slightly. But why us? Children of Zeus, Poseidon and Hades are amongst the strongest demigods to be born, Persephone said, a bit of a frown on her face at the mention of her husband's infidelity. Bianca ducked back behind Kashina. Very smart, Nico nodded while the red-haired woman snorted in disagreement. Naruto could wipe the floor with some of their children, Kashina said. The big three and their children grunted and grumbled at that. Talia and Percy sent her annoyed looks while she shrugged their gazes off. Her baby was badass just like his mama. You got that right, sexy waifu. What does that even mean? Artemis. It's weeaboo for wife, Hera answered with a straight face. Yes, and while I would normally turn to him as he is under my husband's command, he is otherwise preoccupied, Persephone said. With what? Talia asked. Olympian duties, Persephone said before Kashina could open her mouth. Liar. Apollo cried foul. Talia narrowed her eyes in disbelief but Persephone ignored it. You must find the thief and stop him before he escapes. Hades has closed the realm until the sword is returned. No, she did. Hades grumbled. But you must hurry, I fear what happens if the sword falls into the enemy's hands. But this is the underworld, Percy said. Surely the thief can't escape. Percy, you do remember that you escaped with your father's aid? Kashina asked. Percy had the decency to blush. He had overlooked that. You tend to do that at times, Nico told him, getting a glare from the son of the sea. How will we know if he escapes? Bianca asked. Persephone looked at her stepdaughter, a flash of annoyance danced across her eyes before it vanished, and she held her hand out. Before the demigod's eyes, a carnation appeared in her hand, bright red and seemingly glowing in the darkness. 
She offered it to Bianca, who took it hesitantly and carefully. Don't know if it's cursed. Nico snorted and Demeter looked at him in annoyance. This carnation will always face the thief and lose petals as time elapses. When the last petal falls, the thief will have escaped. Good luck, demigods. Persephone vanished in a swirl of shadows and left the lingering scent of pomegranate juice behind. She's brief, Hazel muttered. Kashina smiled and patted Bianca on the shoulder. Keep to your training. Search out the hermit. He will help you. Despite his faults, he's the best spy in Lord Hades' forces. I have ninja spies. Hades smiled wickedly. Nothing happens in the underworld without him knowing about it. Who's the hermit? Percy asked. Kashina shook her head. A very old, and I use the term lightly, friend. He is eccentric, but he is a good man. Be careful Percy. Watch out for Bianca Chan, she's still so young. I think she just enjoys babying us. Nico grumbled, but still smiled a bit. I hope I get in there soon. Hazel said in a hopeful tone. Frank frowned at that, he had yet to appear either and he was worried that Hazel might stay dead. And you be careful too, Talia Chan. I still want grandbabies, databane. Arg. Talia growled that she had to read that as everyone laughed at her. Would you get lost? Talia asked, her face red. Kashina laughed and vanished in a cloud of smoke. What was that about? Percy asked. Talia glared at him so hard Percy worried she might actually shoot lightning out of her eyes. Really wish I could, the hunter grunted. None of your damn business, that's what. The hermit, where would the hermit be? Bianca asked softly. Who knows? Let's just start walking before I lose my cool, Talia said. Too late. Percy and Nico sang out as Talia gripped the book tighter. Bianca nodded and led the way after she drew her sword from her back. It was made of Stygian iron, much like Nico's katana, but was shorter by at least a foot. Bianca led them through a small passageway that was lighter than their surroundings, slicing a few souls that were trying to latch onto them. So clingy. Nico shook his head. A half hour passed and the group had made their way out of the cavern into the fields of Asphodel. Bianca had her work cut out for her and handed the flower to a very unenthusiastic Percy. Talia got a kick out of it, though. Little flower boy Jackson, Ares snickered as Percy glared heatedly at him. So do you know anything about the hermit? Percy asked Bianca. I've heard my father mention him once or twice, Bianca said. She sliced down a ghastly woman that reached out for her. Persephone doesn't like him and neither does Kashina, but Kashina has told me he's a good man before. It sounded like she was trying to reassure herself more than us, Talia said. I think it was someone Whiskers knew. Naruto is such a man whore. Knowing everyone, Percy rolled his eyes. Like his father, Artemis smirked in agreement. Hey. Percy rolled his eyes. Of course he was. Talia frowned at him. What's that supposed to mean? Nothing. Percy said with a grunt. Someone's still jealous. Talia smirked at Percy, making him scowl at her. Oh go make out with your boyfriend. He's not my boyfriend. They continued through the field silently, the conversation dead as the people around them. There was a loud, boom, 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 in the distance, and that was followed by a loud exclamation of, damn it. I almost had the fucking thing. One more time, next time I'll get it for sure. He he he. Hades chuckled darkly. Where's a swear jar when you need one? Percy asked as the loud swearing continued. I think I could make $500 easy. That's not who I think it is, is it? Talia asked, trying not to laugh. Yep, Bianca said. They walked towards the swearing and soon another set of booms were heard and felt. Bianca led them around a bend and they found an ugly troll of a man that pushed his shoulder against a boulder. Bianca frowned. Sisyphus. The man who tried to cheat death and lost. Good old sissy. Nico smirked fondly. Still could have moved that boulder. Talia grumbled. We should question him before he gets halfway up the hill, Talia said. Percy and Bianca nodded in agreement. They ran over to Sisyphus just as he pressed his hands against the boulder. Sisyphus must have seen them because he wigged out and started running around the boulder. Ah, furies. I'm pushing the rock, you can't punish me. Scared shitless. Ares chuckled. Ah, that was always good to see. We're not the Furies, 
Percy said. He, Talia and Bianca chased him around the boulder. The Scooby-Doo chase music started playing as Apollo whistled innocently. Ha, huh, I highly doubt that, Sisyphus said. They ran around the boulder for a few moments before Talia snapped. Screw this, Aegis, she said. Talia raised her arm and her replica of Aegis unfolded out from around her wrist. Sisyphus ran right into it and fell to his back, scrambling away. Always good to use. Athena smiled fondly at Zeus, her shield. Ah, fiend, I do my task. I have yet to stop. I just need, ah, uh, rest. Rest, he pleaded. Then rest, Bianca said. Sisyphus' eyes trailed to her blade and he swallowed audibly. Where does a fiend like you get a blade like that? Sisyphus asked. The underworld gift shop. Nico chirped. Percy knitted his brow. I always miss that place. From my father, Hades, Bianca said. Sisyphus narrowed his eyes at her and then reached out to kick Talia in the shin. He what? The hunter snapped as Percy and Nico snickered. Ow, what the hell, asshole? Not furies, Sisyphus said. He climbed to his feet and looked around anxiously. Demigods then. All right, I will rest. Hey, would you three like something to eat? Just watch my boulder for me and I'll grab something. He always was the smooth talker. Hermes inclined his head to the dead man. Don't get me started, Hades grunted with irritation. Don't listen to anything he says that's not related to escaping the underworld, Bianca said as she sheathed her blade. Escaping the underworld, you three are looking for a way out, too. Well, I'll cut you a deal. Someone pushes my boulder and I'll show you where to go, Sisyphus said. Be a lot nicer than having a sword at my throat. A sword? Talia asked. Yeah, another demigod. He was anxious to leave, too, Sisyphus said. Ethan. Percy frowned, a sad look in his eyes. He had like a gift-trapped shovel or something. The Undertaker shovel of doom. Poseidon Mock gasped. Hades looked at him dryly, humorous. I try, I don't know, I was too worried about the sword. So we're looking for a demigod, Percy said. Do you know what he looks like? Ha, huh, you won't get that information for free, Sisyphus said, rubbing his hands together. Come on, make a deal. I'll tell you whatever you want. Deal, or no deal. Before any of them could agree, there was the sound of gurgling and the ground split open beneath Sisyphus' feet. He fell into the pit of muddy substance and swore again. No deals for you, sissy. Stop calling me that, you ugly son of a bitch. Sisyphus craned his neck to glare at the man crouched a good distance behind him. Such language, Hestia frowned. That's just rude. The man huffed and Percy looked over at him. His white hair stood out like a beacon in the darkness, the twin bangs dangled down past his jawline and a noticeable ponytail almost reached the top of his leg. His skin was a dulled tan and trailing down from his eyes to the bottom of his jaw were two red lines. Hum, not ugly, Aphrodite commented idly. Around his head was a headband very much like Naruto's, horned and marked with strange kanji on the front. He wore faded olive green shirt and pants that looked like something ninja would wear with a red vest over it. Under his green shirt was a strange mesh and some sort of armor protected his arms. The man stood up and walked forward, his strange sandals clacked against the rocks. He looked like he was over six feet tall. Ninja, Leo cried out, so I'm guessing that's the hermit. Nico figured. The man grinned once he towered over them and Sisyphus. A large hand clapped onto the old prisoner's shoulder and the man chortled. Ah, sissy, you should really learn to respect your betters. Trying to scheme your way out of another punishment was only going to increase your service. Honestly, it does. You'd think he'd wise up after all these years. Hades stated. Sisyphus said something in another language, Latin probably, that had the man laughing loudly. The man rubbed at his eye and sighed. That's a good one he said. Let me tell you one of mine. His left hand opened and a familiar blue spiraling ball of energy formed in his hand. Ooh, that's looking to be painful. Ares grinned. The man drove the attack into Sisyphus' gut, making the prisoner double over. His feet were still trapped in the mud, it kept him from flying off. Sisyphus fell back into the mud pit and the old man glared at him. Back to work, sissy. You've got another eternity to get that boulder to the top of the hill, he said. 
Sisyphus was freed from the mud and he immediately got started on his punishment. The man smirked and turned back to the kids, his eyes leered over to Leah. Why hello there. Oh that old fucker. Talia seethed, Jason glaring along with her father. Talia held up a crackling fist. Try me, kinky, he said. He's got a mouth. Aphrodite giggled, liking him. Percy's jaw dropped. Bianca turned so red she was glowing and Talia erupted in a shower of static. Typical. Hades rolled his eyes at his niece's reactions. She took a swing at him and the man jumped back, clearing ten feet with ease. He held his hands up in surrender and laughed. So you're the three that Lady Persephone chose, huh? Not a bad pick. We've got the hot-tempered hottie. What? Call me that again and see what happens, Talia said. The idiot powerhouse. He pointed at Percy. Percy glowered. Hey, I'm not an idiot. Percy scowled at the man. How'd you wind up holding the flower then? Ninja schooled. Again, Leo whispered to Percy, getting a punch to the shoulder. Percy had no response for that. It's a miracle, Ares snickered. Plus, I heard your argument earlier, the man said. He looked at Bianca and nodded. Then you're the insecure prodigy. Insecure? Nico scowled at the words, his sister was not insecure. She was withdrawn. Bet you're real good at handling swords, huh? He did not just say that. Hades growled. Nico's hands were twitching. Artemis narrowed her eyes at that. Bianca didn't miss the innuendo and flushed even more red. Talia and Percy glared at him, both still irritated at him. Talia decided enough was enough. Skewer the fucker. Talia hissed. So who the hell are you, huh? Talia asked. I'm so glad you asked. The man then began to do a series of strange dance maneuvers. Apollo clapped. From the mountain of Mayuboku home of the sagely toads. I am the epitome of manliness. Bullshit. Ares shouted. I'd like to see his gun collection. Athena just shook her head. Idiot. Women fawned over me for all of my life. Well, he is amusing. The love goddess tittered. And now I rule the dead ladies with my charm and wit. Ew. Leo made a gross face. Zombie love. I am the toad sage. Jiraiya. That's my teacher. Apollo grinned. Strike that mad pose. It explains so much, Artemis said. It was fate you'd meet. Talia closed the book. Take this away from me. Now, she snapped. Gladly, Nico said, eager to read about his sister. To be continued. 